Hello everybody. Uh, we are going to cover another person's game today. Actually two people. Uh, we're going to cover it quite quickly. So um, I just want to go over some of the highlights and then show you some of the features of watching another person's game. Uh, this one is a battle between Derzinski and Terran in the upper right hand corner of uh, Zelnaga Caverns and Danny Boy in the lower left hand corner of Zelnaga Caverns. Um, let's cover some of the basics really fast. I'm going to pause the game and go into it. So, first off, um, you can't see any of this information over here on the menu uh, during the game, but when you're watching a replay of another person, uh, you can get some of the insight of how they were uh, planning their attack and whatever they were doing. Um, you can see the resource rate collection rate. This um, we call food, and um, it's basically how much you can make as far as more units. Um, Danny Boy here, he has made 10 SCVs because he has no other units out, of course, and out of a possible 11, and uh, Terzinski has made 11 out of 11. So Danny Boy is um, making a, a supply depot. He has to so that he can continue on, and the same thing is happening up here with Terzinski. As you notice, roughly they're going at about the same speed. The other thing I wanted to cover was something called APM. A lot of the times you'll hear them say, oh, I had really fast APM, or man, my APM's terrible. And you might not quite get what that is. Um, if you've been playing for a while, these tips are really not for you. These are newbie tips, so these are for people that are just learning the game. Uh, so please forgive any uh, stuff that we're covering that you're going, oh my god, it's so basic. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and keep the game going, because... I have to beat my 10 minute time limit for YouTube to upload. Okay, so um, the APM of Danny Boy is 202 actions per minute, and the, Danny, uh, the APM for um, Drzinski is 27 actions per minute. When you're playing, um, you can set your uh, units and buildings and things like that on your hotkeys bar down here. Let's go down here and see Danny Boy. I like the way he has his setup. He has SCVs on two. Uh, barracks on four and command center on five. So what he's doing, if you if we turn on his cam here, see how it's, he's moving around. He's checking his uh, barracks and he's constantly checking his command center for making SCVs. Right now he's not making SCVs because oh, it's getting crazy. Right now he's not making SCVs because he's making an orbital command, and while that's being made, of course you can't make SCVs. But once it's done, start calling in the mules and the money just starts flowing in. The benefit of having your hotkeys set up like this is that you don't have to even be watching your game. Right now I still have Danny Boy selected, right? Well I'm up here, if I have a probe or something coming in to check out his base, I don't even have to have him do anything. He could be running around here, I could be watching and counting his units. At the same time I can just click 5 and then click S for make an SCV. Or I can click 4 and hit A for making a Marine, make another Marine, A, A, A. So it's really important that you set up your hotkeys. You can play the game by clicking individual buildings. You can click this building, you can hit A. Or I'm sorry, you can click this building and click the Marine icon. You click this building and click the SCV icon. But you see what happens when I do that? I click the building. And then I have to move my mouse over here to click that. Then I've got to go over here, click that building, and then i got to move my mouse to click that. If I'm using hotkeys, all I have to do is, in this case he's got this set up as uh, zero, all i got to do is click the zero, and then hit S. So zero S, zero S. To me the zero is a little bit far away from my S button, so I wouldn't probably do it that way. I might set it as 2S, because then I hit 2S, 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 2, and that is making uh, making SCVs the whole time. So as far as strategy goes, um, both of these guys are starting off by throwing up some bunkers. Bunkers are fantastic against mass marine rushes um, because the, each bunker has 400 uh, hit points, and then each marine has 45. Well, what they do is you're giving them a shield of at least 400, and then it starts burning through them. So if a marine were to run up and start shooting at this, the Marines inside are totally protected and then they can shoot back. If your 
fast enough, you can bring an SCV down, repair the building while the Marine's shooting at the building, and the guys inside are pretty much invincible. It doesn't work well against tanks, of course, but that's another video we'll cover at a different time. Um, Danny Boy has taken the Zelnaga Towers, which are these little structures right here, and they give you a really wide range on your minimap of what's going on. So two Marines, a total of 100 minerals, are controlling the entire center of this map. Um, it gives you a great vision to sort of see what somebody's doing. You can see if they're sneaking around this way or sneaking around that way. If you start seeing their SCVs running over this way, you know they have a uh, command center started up there. Tanks are fantastic against Marines, as long as they keep them at range. So one way to do that is to select your orbital command and scan out into the area. Like scan here, because it's a little bit outside the range of, say, Danny Boy. Let's go back up here. Danny Boy can only see this far. You see how this is fog of war? He can't see over here. So by the ability to scan up in this direction, the tank will reach that far, and you'll be able to hit any units that would be sort of hidden back in here. All right, so it looks like Danny Boy is going to be going for, a, you know, more of a traditional mix. He's going to have some air units, he's going to have some tanks, and he's going to have some marines. It looks like Durzinski, on the other hand, it, he might be just going mass marines. Yeah, look at all of these barracks he's got going up here. One of my other videos I talked about, upgrade, 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 engineering bay. He's got two engineering bays. Let's check out one of his marines. He's already got one, one which means he's got one more armor and he has seven damage total for each marine Ready compared to the five that they start off with. Let's pause for a second. Okay, the upgrades on Drzinski's units, he has one one also, but he's also got the shield. Um, that shield gives you an extra amount of hit points, or an extra amount of buffer before you start burning through their hit points. So, um, the shield along with that was Rosinski. Danny Boy doesn't have a shield. So you look, you know, that extra bit is just enough to, to help him win some of these little fights. <laughs> Danny Boy's not happy. And this is one of the, 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 the showing of a really good, good player is they're already expanding. They're expanding already to the gold, and gold minerals you have much more minerals packed into a smaller area and uh, see these are 1500 and if we go over here to like a regular blue one they're 1500 but I believe they come at a faster rate while they are being mined so like I, I don't know how much each one of these I think picks up five minerals for each one and I think maybe these guys they pick up ten too fast to count right now, but but anyway, the gold minerals are are they're great. They're like a a, a great place to to get all your your minerals from if you can get to them. The problem is is with in this particular map, the gold is sort of left vulnerable from being attacked from this way, this way, or even this way. If you set up a tank line down here, you're just going to tear up the mineral line really bad. So it's it's a vulnerable position, and that's why they they put it like that so that it makes it worthwhile to do to do that. Real quick, Vikings are an air unit. Um, and if you notice, um, Derzinski really doesn't have much for air other than his medevacs. The Vikings are not, in this case, used to try to take out the medevacs specifically. If they were to fly directly over the top of these Marines to take out these medevacs, the Marines would probably chew them up before they got a chance to. Um, Let's go ahead and keep playing. What they're used for is they run the they run out ahead and give the tank that added vision. He doesn't have to do a scan. He can just sort of stay in the air and he can see a lot farther with the air unit. Uh, so the fog of war is kind of pulled back a little bit. So yeah, it looks like Kuzinski is going heavy marine. Now let's check out Danny Boy, one of his guys. Grab one. Oh, here's why <laughs> Danny Boy's losing. 
is it's so obvious and it's it's something I, I kind of keep harp on with everybody. If you think the game's going to go long, and, and I consider a 23-minute game, which is what this one is, a long game, you need to upgrade. Upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Because Danny is just or Danny is just dying to Drusinski. Yeah, okay, so we lost a couple. But because the, uh, Drusinski is mass marine, he's just running it in constantly, they only cost 50 minerals. They're really cheap. And they have massive upgrades. Now he's got 3-3 three, three and um, Danny Boy 0-0. Zero, zero. So these guys, while they look the same as the same kind of unit, they're not even close. He, he has Stim, which means that he can do extra damage. He's got the uh, Medivacs here, which is going to heal the Stim from, anything, from the damage they take from taking that Stim back. And while that's going on, he is just chewing through Danny's uh, old units, minerals, everything. He's just basically winning the War of Attrition with something as simple as a Marine. They're a very powerful unit. I kind of like them when I play Terrans because you can shoot both ground and air. If you, you could do the same sort of technique with like Protoss maybe, but to shoot ground and air you need to use um, Stalkers. And Stalkers are expensive. They need gas. Marines are really cheap. And they don't need any gas at all. And you can just crank through them uh, to, to win. And that's just what Dzerzhinsky did. Mass Marines beat out all of this sort of like tier 2 and tier 3 tech stuff that uh, uh, Danny Boy was trying. It just wasn't going to work. Realistically, I think Danny Boy might have been able to win if he had um, upgraded. And if he had also just dropped down a reactor on his... Um, two factories here and just made mass hellions. Hellions on the ground will chew up marines because blue flame hellion especially will shoot a straight line and it takes out you know ten marines at once. So no matter how fast the marines are shooting the hellions are really fast to move around. They can outmaneuver the marines and they can just cook them from like four different directions and it would take out a whole ton of them. But hindsight's 2020, right? It's easy for me to sit here and say oh that's the way to do it but it's one thing when you're playing. So benefits of watching another game from another couple of players is you will learn new strategies and new techniques and see what does and what does not work. Okay, I hope you found this useful and helpful and uh, if you have any questions or comments please leave them below in the comments section and happy gaming!